So if you are watching live on YouTube, we're doing a quick mic change and then we'll be right over to the opening of this Califresh box of Kaladesh. Brought to you by Comic so Tower. Watching live on YouTube, we're doing a quick mic change and then we'll be right over to the opening of this Califresh box of Kaladesh. Brought to you by Comic so Tower. Watching live on YouTube, we're doing a quick mic change and then we'll be right over. Griff is staring daggers at me. Califresh box of Kaladesh. Brought to you by Comic Tower. Mic check one two. Mic check one two. Griff is staring daggers at me. Califresh box of Kaladesh. Mic check one two. Mic check one two. There you are. All right. So that that sounds like it's coming through. That's all right. Okay. We'll see. The whole like circular sound thing is gonna get really weird after a while. Yeah. If you could if you could mute what's happening live, that would be greatly appreciated. All right. So hi. We're doing this live for the first time. So I'm. Probably going to be a little bit different, by the way, in case you can't tell by the voice. This is John Paul from Comic Town. And this is Eric with Comic Town. And we wanted to go over a couple things that we have going on here at the store before we get to this lovely box of Kaladesh. First up, as you can see, we do have this mat here advertising the Comic Town Classic Series Finals Qualifiers. We have three partner stores that we're working with to bring you qualifiers for our Comic Town Classic Series Final in December. So head to the websites of Hometown Hobbies, Legendary Games, and White Flag Games to find out when the qualifiers near you are happening. These events are in Kentucky, West Virginia, and Indiana. Also, we do have our Win a Box FNM coming up if you enjoy playing Draft or Standard. Starting this Friday and continuing for the next three Fridays, we'll be having Win a Boxes where the winner of each of those FNMs will get a box of Kaladesh, <coughs> and the second through eighth players will split two boxes of Kaladesh. Thirdly, the Classic Series is having its final Classic, the Fall Classic, on October 8th. Start time is 10 a.m. and registration opens as usual at 9 a.m. That'll be here at the store, and we look forward to seeing everybody here. But with that aside, let's get to the real reason why we're here. Let's crack this open. Let's see if we open any inventions. Uh, I'm going to be commenting a little more on Limited, because that's more my speed of things. And I will be commenting on modern and constructed applications in general. Fantastic, and you're going to be seeing a lot of our hands, because our hands are doing amazing and wonderful things, including ripping open the cellophane that I also Mostly JP's, because he's a much better hand model than I am. I, I don't know. I mean, you've got, I mean, the hands are going to work just fine. I mean, they're going to they're gonna open packs, and that's what people are most impressed by. So there's the art, no insert this time, kind of traditional for what WotC is doing right now. Um, we're going to be mostly speeding through to the rare, per usual. And if we open any foils, we'll talk about those. If we open any inventions, I'll probably stand up, run around the store very quickly, screaming at the top of my lungs, and then we'll comment on the invention as well. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, inventions are a special foil subset of cards that are released in this set. You only get one approximately per case. They're very rare. They're very cool. But for right now, let's uh, harry our way to the end of this pack. We'll obviously show off each card as we're headed there. And the rare in this pack is we start off with a Gear Hulk. Well, the, pretty good way to start off the, the booster this, box. This seems good. Like starting off with Mythics. Starting off with Mythics is awesome. Uh, this is Combustible Gear Hulk. Uh, for those of you who played during M12 and M13, this is a little bit of a throwback to the Titan cycle, except these all don't cost six. Some cost five. Some cost seven. Uh, this guy, when you put him onto the battlefield, gives your opponent a choice. Either flip three cards from the top of your deck and have them take damage equal to those cards converting mana cost, or let you draw three cards. In any red base deck in standard, this seems like a go-to awesome card. I have also heard some rumors of maybe like a mono red sneak attack in Legacy playing this card. Like Punisher mechanics are normally not that good, but this card and that type of deck is going to be pretty absurd. Either giving your, your opponent like Basically, two terrible options for that type of a deck. Just like, sure, I can let you draw three cards, but you can just sneak attack in an Emrakul or something right. else. But I mean, really disgusting. flipping Emrakul off this guy, 15 in your is, opponent, when yeah, you're already taking damage off fetches, yeah, seems it's, just yeah. fine. I can tell you in limited, sometimes you whiff on three lands with this guy, but hey, 6-6 six, six for striker for six seems just fine. We have our land and token. Let's head on to the next booster pack.
All right, and we'll just set those down right there as we flip through so you have an even space to see the cards. And our rare is the Raffle Copter. Or better known as Smuggler's Copter. Um, if anybody played any pre-releases over this weekend, they can see that this card was very, very absurdly good. Mm -hmm. um, I can see Affinity playing this card in Modern. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives that that deck some extra draw power, extra mm -hmm. staying power against certain decks like Jund, Abzan. Yeah, we were talking to you while we were cracking here in the shop, and I was like, I saw the price of this card, and this card is currently going for, as we're recording this, this is going for $10 on SCG. And I was not expecting that price at all. I was <coughs> expecting something around 4 to 5 bucks. so there's obvious constructed implications that I missed when I was reviewing the set. I'm thinking... Uh, on Saturday when I'm in Indy for the Open, I might see a lot of this card in a lot of the more aggressive base mono red decks. Yeah, there's, a, there's a, a red-white artifact deck that's running around that looks pretty solid, mm -hmm. and then a uh, mono red, anything mono red right now, it's actually yeah. going to be really, really good. Right, we do have a foil in this pack. It is this lovely... Uh, Elf Artificer here that has Fabricate. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the Fabricate mechanic, when this card enters the battlefield, you get a choice. Either you can put two plus one plus one counters on this guy, or you can put two colorless servos onto the battlefield. It's limited a lot of the card, you just get the servos, because having a lot of dudes in limited is always good. This guy can't be bopped with creatures with power two or less, so this guy may want to be big, so you can get through with him massively. We have the land and a advertising insert for Magic Duels, and we're headed on to the next path. As I make sure, just look for the cards where you can. All right, here we go. Chandra greets us as we crack this open. Let's see what we open inside. Let's see if we have a Chandra waiting inside. Uh, one can hope. Lord knows we could use more. Not wrong. <laughs> All right, as we're closing in, our rare in this pack is a Mythic Rare. This is Angel of Invention. It is a flying, vigilance, lifelinking, 2-1 for 5. Uh, it does have Fabricate, too. We talked about how that gives you servos or plus 1, plus 1 counters, and it comes as an Anthem. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with what Anthem means, it means it gives all your team a plus boost of some sort. In this case, this is giving all your other creatures plus 1, plus 1. Standard-wise, I don't know if this guy is going to have any implications, because we still have Archangel Avacyn, Verterous Gearhawk, that is also in this set, is much better at distributing plus one, plus one counters. Yeah, but she's an angel. There's got to be a lot of commander card players who are after this girl. Uh, Commander-wise, to... limited. This card's obscene. Yeah. Again, it's just going wide and limited. Also, pumping those ones that you pop out is, is really good. Makes it really hard for your opponent Sweet. to block. And we do have the basic landed token. Let's scurry on along. Uh, I'm hearing beeping over there. Are people commenting? No, just just beeps for the sake of beeps. Fantastic. All right, let's head to the next booster pack. Try to keep the pack on camera this time, and I succeeded. Let's dramatically reverse our way to the back of the pack and see the what our rare there are many. is. The puns, they are many. And I haven't had a chance to look at the commons and uncommons. I've been working mostly with the rares up front, pricing those. Our rare in this pack, however, is Authority of the Consoles. Um, this has uh, creatures your opponent control into the battlefield tapped. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your opponent's control, you gain life. This, uh, card, this <laughs> card seems really good in... A blue-white control deck as a way to stave off the early aggression from, like, say, the mono-white deck that we had this last standard rotation. Right. What different iterations of aggro decks we're going to have this this current standard. Um, I think it's just a good sideboard card for any white, blue, or white X and, I mean, even, control deck. Yeah, in, in Limited, I'm looking at this and I'm just like, maybe sideboard? Maybe not even play this card at all. Because this card just, it doesn't have enough impact for what it's trying to do. Sure, it puts your opponents off the curve for one turn, but in limited, I would rather be drawing some spell to cast that actively affects the board than this guy. And this card is secretly good against your favorite deck in modern, the Kiki Evolution. Yeah, it's good. All right, moving right along, we played out the token and land while we were <coughs> commenting there. Let's move on to the next pack. All right. Let's head on down to our rare. And the rare in this pack is a Bristling Hydra. Uh, this also features the first of another new mechanic in this set, which is Energy. Uh, energy are different, uh, 
technically they're counters that you can get that you have that you can spend on abilities. Specifically for the Bristling Hydra, it is a 4-3 for 4. You get 3 energy, and then any time you can pay 3 energy to put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on this creature, and then it also gets Hexproof until end of turn, basically making it so that whatever removal spell they target casting this guy, as long as it's targeting this guy, is going to fizzle once they activate the energy ability. There's a lot of talk of this guy slotting into some of the green-white X decks in standard. I can see that as being a hole filler for them losing a lot of some of their token guys. Mm -hmm. Um, Green White Midrange loves a guy like this. Like, I get random upside with my guy, so my yeah, four 3 4 three. is a 5 4, and it gets hexproof on the turn that I do that. Yeah, 4 mana 4 3 is not terrible. Yeah. Um, Limited Wines, this guy's absurd. This guy seems good, especially when you get a lot of the energy generation and that there's green a, decks can have. There is a lot of it, and yeah. in, in three specific colors, honestly, like red, blue, and green. Any combination mm -hmm. of that with this and guy if you is can really good. Any of those together, I, this guy just gets absurd real fast. Really curious to how this format's going to look draft-wise when we see people playing mm -hmm. it this weekend. Yeah, I'm really interested because seeing this set drafted, it, like, seeing this deck, this format in sealed was very interesting. Seeing this format drafted so you actually start seeing a lot of these archetypes come through, mm -hmm. not just people having to play with the cards they, they are handed. I think you're going to see a lot of very, very high power level limited decks. Probably some very format. fast, aggressive decks, too, in this, limit, this limited format yeah. in particular. Here we head on down to the rare, and it is a Cultivator of Blades. Again, we have <coughs> Fabricate on this guy. He is, he can either be a 5-mana 3-3 three, three, or a 5-mana 1-1 one, one that comes with two other 1-1s. One, when this guy attacks, um, other attacking creatures you have get plus X, plus X till end of turn, which is equal to his power, giving you an incentive to put the counters on him from Fabricate. I think most of the time you're just going to put this guy on the battlefield with dudes so you can have space and then pump him later and bring it on through. Well, well, I look at this kind of almost in the same vein as a critical bee myth where it's not as good. Right. He will give you the same effect. There's really not an overrun type of an effect for limited in this format outside okay. of inspiring charge. Right. So this is a way to push through a lot of damage and make blocking mm -hmm. very, very difficult for your opponents. Seems good. Let's move on to the next pack. And keep that out to the side. Don't have any puns yet for cathartic <laughs> reunion. The card's just emotional and makes me well up inside. All right. We have in this pack a trample hasted <coughs> vehicle. So vehicles, for those of you who haven't been paying attention, have a crew cost, which requires you to tap any number of creatures that total the power of the crew number, and it turns the vehicle into a creature until end of the turn. So basically, you put some dudes in the vehicle, and the dudes then attack inside the vehicle. This vehicle has the special ability, as it is the Fleet Wheel Cruiser, that when it enters the battlefield, it becomes a creature until end of turn. So you don't need to worry about tapping anybody, and he just gets to swing right on in for five, turn one. Seems like this goes in a mono-red deck in standard, oh my gosh. Um... I'm not going to lie, I'm working with this card a little bit for Mono Red myself. Kind of what I, figured I, you would be. I'm notorious for playing Mono Red. Most of you who play at the Comic Town area and know me for years kind of know this. I've been off, off of it a little bit because it's not been as good of late. Yeah, but with the 4 4 Hellion that's coming out in the set, with this guy, with a lot of the um, vehicles having very cheap crew costs, I mean, it seems pretty poised for there to be some sort yeah. of mono deck in this standard. There is, um, even going up as far as going into, like, say, Reality Smasher. That's a lot of guys coming at you every single turn with haste. Exactly. So, we do have a foil, and it is a rare. Uh, this is the Master Trinketer. This is kind of your lord for Servos and Thopters, giving them plus one, plus one, and for four mana, one of them being white, you do get to put Servos onto the battlefield. Seems really powerful and limited. Don't really see this having too many constructed obligations. Yep, I agreed. Limited. Card's fantastic. All right. Other than that, eh, we'll see. Maybe. I mean, Maybe if, there's, if, if there's enough token generation that ends up with fabrication, that ends up being a legitimate and viable deck, could be something that the uh, tokens deck, the green-white tokens deck, mods to. I don't see them having enough fabricate to make that happen. Maybe, but they usually rely on mostly like getting in and this a tokens yes. for, for most of their token generation. I hate to ruin what you're talking about, but let's head on uh, through this. The puns. the puns are real, guys. 
And our rare in this pack is a Dubious Challenge. This is the not as good collected company card thing. Um, I don't think you sh anyone should be playing this card in any format. I am probably going to regret this. I'm going to see this card as outright awful, but <laughs> somebody will find a way to break it and I will look like a complete idiot. Yeah, what was the card that I said, gosh, this card is completely unplayable, and then it ended up being like super busted... Uh, I think it was Jace Rin's Prodigy. I know that there's, uh, if you listen to the At Your Inset podcast, Jace was uh, very classically said, eh, this card's okay. Uh, collectively, uh, we all said that yeah. when that card was coming out. It was coming like, this out. card's okay, and then the card was busted. This card, I mean, top ten cards, opponent gets to choose one card that they get, and then you get the other. Uh, just... On the format, I can see having a lot of fun with this as Commander. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think the issue is fun. I don't think this card is going to be a competitive, constructed playable uh, card. Or, please, love of God, don't play this in your limited deck. You're just going to be... You're going very, to get, you're gonna get a one-drop or a two-drop, you're going to be sad. Please don't play this card. You're going to flip your Gearhawk, your opponent's going to take your Gearhawk, you're just not going to have a good day. Yeah. Alright, let's move on through the pack to our next inspection. Nope, not getting the rim shot. Fox. All right, and we do have, and you'll see this does have the Planeswalker symbol. This is a storyline event that is going to occur sometime during the published storyline on the Wizards website. Um, to if you guys have not been reading the storyline for Kaladesh, it has actually been very good. Yeah. I would suggest going back and, and reading it. Exactly. So, with that being said, this is the Confiscation Coup. Um, this is sort of a mind control effect. You get four energy for five mana, and then you can pay any number of energy that you have stored up to try and gain control of a permanent equal to its mana cost. Um, I think this card's sweet. I think this card's flavorful. I think this card's incredibly good in limited. Constructed uh, mind control effects tend not to do so well, but it's still super, super flavorful and super, super awesome, even considering we know that somewhere along the line at the Inventor's Fair, people's inventions are going to get stolen. And it's going to be sad. And it's probably going to be Tezzeret, but you probably, know. Probably, since Tezzeret's starting to be set up to be the villain, who we haven't seen but in a in, while. In regards to this card, we remember Exert Influence from Battle mm -hmm. for Zendikar being used as a way to, you know, mm -hmm. steal your opponent's Siege Rhinos yeah. and some of the different Abzan decks. Okay. I mean, this could be a, a card that does see some sideboard play in standard. Correct. Well, I'd like to take the privilege of showing you this foil card that we opened in this pack. Uh, this is the Pacticism effect for this block. It costs three mana. Uh, enchanted creature can't attack block or crew vehicles. The crew vehicles is, is very a nice... Important. Very important and limited for this format. In, in limited, it's very important. It's in constructed, not, yeah, so, not much. so much. This card's amazing in limited. Shuts down a lot. Like, it shuts down anything. Only thing is I wish it could equip to vehicles, because when you get the Skyship Sovereign out, card takes over games at all. Sure does. But with that being said, let's head into our next booster pack. And our rare is the Multiform Wonder. Uh, you get three energy when it comes into play for five mana. You can activate it to give it some abilities. You can, by paying an energy, you can pay another energy to give it plus two, minus two, or minus two, plus two, as need be. Cool and limited, I think that's about where it's going to see play. So I had this guy played against me on the Sunday pre-release here at the mm -hmm. shop. The opponent played it, had seven energy. I'm like, I, there's no way I'm killing this thing. Mm -hmm. ever in combat. Yeah. I'd already used my one, like, kill anything removal spell. I was in a red, mm -hmm. red, black, it's kind of aggressive get that, because, I mean, that's where my pool kind of led me. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, this guy hit the table, I'm like, eh, yeah, I guess I'll lose now. So, basically what you're saying, in the energy generation decks, 100% play this guy. Oh, absolutely. In any other decks, maybe. He, seem, he seems okay. I mean, he's still a very hard to deal with creature and, and limited. Right. All right, but with that being said, let's move on to our next pack. <coughs> I think just in general, okay is where he lands. Yeah. Anyway, I bex you this pack is going to be great. That one was stretching, that Guys, one was bad. Guys, he, he I... really reached for that one. You, you should have seen the vein that popped out. It, 
Yeah. But that being said, here is a Panharmonicon. Uh, this card seems really sweet. I want to see the deck that gets built around this card. I don't know what deck that is yet. I don't think it's in standard. I might agree with you, but... At being, least not yet. Right. But being able to get double triggers off all of your artifacts and creatures entering the battlefield um, is really super sweet. Um, I just think we need to find creatures that have really awesome enter the battlefield effects and just right now we use really this as sort of... like this almost feels like if it's the birthing pod slot in some sort of eternal deck. But I, mean, I don't know. Being able to play a Thrag like. Tusk, gain ten life, mm -hmm. be able to play a Restor Angel, Restoration Angel, link two things is kinda cool. Mm -hmm. But I think this this card definitely definitely finds a home in, in a lot of different commander decks. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be Yeah, this deck's going to do some really dumb things yes. in that format. Yes. It definitely is going to do a lot of silly fun things. But with that said, let's dive on into the next booster pack. As I recklessly tear into See, I it. knew that one was coming, guys. I'm just, that one was easy. That one I didn't have to work on at all. I mean, that one just kind of played to your to your strengths there, bud. Uh, played to something. All right, so we have Insidious Will as our rare in this pack. This is a modal counterspell. Um, one of the things that we found, at least in some constructed formats, um, modal spells have made control viable in, a, in specifically modern. Standard is starting to get some modal stuff that makes it possible, but Collective Brutality seen a lot of play. Um, collective Blessing is starting to see a Blessed decent... Alliance. Blessed Alliance is also having a lot of uh, play Collective Defiance well. has seen a lot of play. Mm -hmm. So uh, these modal spells have seen a little bit of play as well. So, counter a spell, choose new targets for a spell, copy a spell, choose new targets for the copy. I, does this make a blue X control deck viable in standard? I don't think so. Okay. The the reason being is we already have a, a four mana counter spell in summary dismissal. Mm -hmm. Some of the cards that you're worrying about are ones that have cast triggers like Elder Deep Fiend, Emrakul, mm -hmm. Ulamog. This counters them, yes, but they still get to have their, their right. cast abilities. And for now, until summary dismissal is gone, I don't think that's a card we want to be able to play. Sure. So basically, wait until the Eldrazi rotate, then this card could see a decent amount of play. Mm -hmm. All right, we do have a foil in this pack. Uh, it is the Uncommon Restoration Gearsmith. Uh, when I it comes down to this card ever, uh, it's it is uh, basically Gravedigger, except it's a three three, has a white and its mana cost, and can also return artifacts. Huh. So, if you're in white and black and you're <coughs> limited, this card seems sweet because you get a little bit of a power toughness bump with the white mana included into the Gravedigger price. Otherwise. It's a really solid grave digger. Mm -hmm. I think you play this if you're in this color combination. It's not something necessarily you should warp your deck to play in this color combination, but it's definitely a very powerful card that you should pick highly in draft if you are thinking of possibly splashing into one of those two colors. Grave digger effects are usually pretty good and limited anyway. Indeed. Moving on to our next booster pack. It's going to be a very good pack. Aviary. Guys, this is what I have to work with all day. Every yeah, day. I'm just gonna try to power through that pack because I feel bad <laughs> for that one. That that was that was terrible. Bad. Trying a little terrible. too hard on that one. All right, we have Gear for Ori as the rare in this pack. Um, each player gets to play an additional land on their turns, and at the beginning of each player's upkeep, if you have no cards in hand, you get to draw three cards. So tempts you to try to go empty-handed to get an advantage out of this. I see Commander. I see that's about it for this card as far as constructed playability. Agreed. Okay. Again, some things could happen in Aether Revolt or in other sense that could make this standard mm -hmm. playable. Most likely not. Mm -hmm. But Commander players, yeah, please enjoy this card. Yes. It's going to be a lot of fun I for mean, you. I mean, like, if we see Hellbent come back, but I don't oh, think boy. we're going to see Hellbent come I mean, back. Nothing could we could that, but any deck that's to wanting to play with the Hellbent. next plane after Kaladesh... Kind of could ties be, in a we little could bit. see it there, but I mean, going handless always something you can play into. One might even say that you could be one with nothing to gain advantage of that card. That was pretty reckless of me. I'm sure I'll inspire you later. No, you won't. 
All right, and our rare out of this pack is a Mythic Rare, actually. This is one of the Marquee Planeswalkers from the set. This is Sahili Rai. She is native to Kaladesh and has three really awesome activated abilities. First one, being able to scry to be able to filter your draws is great, and then it deals one to each of your opponents. Then you can make a copy of a creature or artifact that you already have on the battlefield, give it haste, and then use it until end of turn. And then her ultimate, which honestly is very, very possible, searching your deck for three artifacts with different names, putting them on the battlefield, and shuffling your library. I was making the comment earlier because I was not aware of the end of the next instep ability. I was thinking that a uh, lantern in modern might want this card. Um, seeing that this gets exiled more regularly I, because I thought the artifacts would just get to stick around, maybe you don't want to play this card as strongly in the deck, but I think in certain decks in Legacy and Vintage, this card might end up being played alongside Dak Faden. I could see that. Um, I'm not too versed on the Legacy and um, Vintage scene mm -hmm. to to say. I'm, I'm probably going to talk it over with some of the Legacy guys when yeah. they come in here this evening for their, their mm -hmm. constructed event at 7.30. In case you're curious and want to come in and play some Legacy, come on in. Yes. Um, Standard-wise, I think this could actually just slot into like a, the Blue-Red Spells deck that we already have. It mm -hmm. gives you a little extra reach for that deck. It gives you another way to make a copy of a Thermal Alchemist or a Storm Chaser Mage or something mm -hmm. else like that. Then it's just going to allow you to push through the extra damage that you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fevered Visions with this card seems just <laughs> fine. Seems pretty okay. All right, let's dive into our next booster pack. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And the rare that we have in this pack is an animation module. This is a one drop. I haven't read this card yet, so <sighs> give me a second. One or more plus one, one placed on a permanent you control. You may pay and put a dude on the battlefield. That seems fine. Um, three, put a counter. Give that permanent another counter. Okay. This card is very weird. Um. I've read this entire <laughs> wall of text, and I still have no idea. Like, okay, so in the Fabricate deck, sure, extra mana, I get a dude by putting all the counters on my guy. In, in Limited, I can, I can see this card right. being fairly good. I don't know if you want to play it 100% of the time. Yeah. Constructed? Uh -huh. Like, I... I mean, Green White Tokens is a thing, but... Maybe... So maybe know. maybe it's a one drop for green white tokens until they drop Nissa or some of their other fabricators to make a bunch of dudes at the same time. Possibly. Seems uh, fine. That, eh? I I feel like that's going to be the one that we get hit on. Like, oh my gosh, animation module is totally amazing in this deck that you totally overlooked. Sort of. And thing. we're okay with that. And we're, we're okay. going to miss things. Yes. We're not professionals. I'm a professional judge. But then again, that means that I'm not really good at evaluating <laughs> cards. Woo! Got there. All right, so I was hoping we'd open one of these. This is Concealed Courtyard. Um, it is a non-basic land, and it enters the battlefield untapped if you control two or fewer other lands. Um, this is the enemy cycle of fast lands that was started back in Scars of Mirrodin. In <coughs> case you have not been paying attention to a lot of the mana bases of modern decks, a lot of your tier one modern decks are playing some number of fast lands in them, especially when you get to Jund, Junk, now Abzan. Uh, it's still Junk. Yeah, Let's just be that's real. fine. But a lot of these decks have simply been playing the ones of the allied colors that work for them, but now they have access to the enemy colors. Which, I, I mean, honestly, for decks like Junk, Abzan, whatever you want to call it, having access to another black-white land, a black-green land, is just going to make their mana work mm -hmm. that much better. Those of us in Modern who play Jund, we, we have ours already. We have right. Black Leap Clips. I don't think right. we want to run anymore. Jury's still kind of out on that. Right, but I mean, like, I, I love the fact because, one, the standard looks like it's a lot more aggressive than standard has been. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this really pushes standard towards that more aggressive bent because later in the game, you're going to put this into play tapped and you're going to feel sad. Um, 
having this early, being able to push out mana very early and have that mana fixing is mm -hmm. really super sweet. I'm excited to have this cycle finally completed yeah. after... Good Lord, Scards was two eight, years? eight years ago, seven years ago, something like that. Yeah, all I have to say is it's about time that we saw that mm -hmm. enemy cycle of those fast lands. Right. Because people have been, been long to for years. All right. Well, that was fast. Let's move on to the next <sighs> rare that we have in this pack. That one was good. That one was fine. Just only because I didn't see the pack to see it coming. <laughs> All right. So our rare in this pack is Aether Storm Rock. It is a 3-3 flyer for four that you get energy whenever another creature or this creature enters the battlefield. And when it attacks, you can pay two energy to put a plus one, plus one counter on it and tap up to one target creature the defending player controls. Basically, later in the game, this guy's going to get huge. It is a threat you have to deal with in limited. Constructed... Mm. Nah. I mean, sure. We have a better four drop. Her name is Gisela the Broken Blade. Yeah, you do. She's a four three life linker. Pretty good. Pretty good. Limited, great bomb. We do have a mo we do have a foil in this pack. It is. I'm, Go ahead. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, <laughs> okay, Prakata Pillar Bug. I tried. Uh, I actually think I, I think I got pretty good. Uh, this is a three drop artifact that's a two three. You can pay black to give it lifelink until end of turn. If you're in black, this card's fine and limited. If you're not in black, if you need a filler card for your deck, which you shouldn't in this format, there's a ton of yeah, artifacts. Yeah, this is just one of the cards yeah. in a, a cycle of cards that are three mana that have activated abilities based on a color. Mm -hmm. All of which are fairly good. Yeah. Kind of harkens back to the construct cycle from both of the Mirrodins. Yep. All right, let's head to the back of this pack to see what rare we have. It is a Sky Whale. I love Sky Whales. They make me very happy. <laughs> uh, this is a flying 6-6 six, six, for 7. You get 3 energy during your upkeep if you have this guy in play, and you can pay 8 energy, which is a huge energy requirement, but when you do, you get to return all other creatures to their opponent's hands, <coughs> activated at sorcery speed. If you're in the energy deck, this guy seems amazing. If you're not in the energy deck, this guy is still a 7-mana 6-6 six, six flyer. That still seems amazing. We should look at this guy kind of in the same way. We had a card back in Alar's Shards of Alara days that we had Keldrick Leviathan. That was an unearth with sure. a similar effect. This card is a little bit better than that, mostly because it's a 6-6 six, six flyer. Right. A 6-6 six, six flyer in limited is actually... Leviathan did not have flying. Correct. It still bounced everything, but it did not have flying. Yeah, this card is actually really good. Even on its own, it would generate, in a couple of turns, enough energy to put you to a point where you can use it, bounce everything except for it, swing for 6, yeah. replay some dudes. I, I think you're missing the, the most important part of this card. It's a Sky Whale. It's a Sky Whale. He was very happy to see that I, it was a Sky Whale. <laughs> When they spoiled Sky Whales, I may have uncontrollably giggled in the store for a good, like, two and a half minutes, because I was so happy. That day, nothing could ruin my attitude. They kept hawking at me to do it, but I stayed fast in my opinion, and they were not able to strike me Stop. down. Just, just... Let's head to see what the rare in this pack is. It is... Not dead parent. This is Pia Nalar. This is the mother of well-known planeswalker Chandra Nalar. Um, just like her Pia and Kieran Nalar counterpart from Origins, she does come into play with a Thopter, but just one, because there's only one of her. Um, for one and a red, target artifact creature gets <coughs> plus one plus oh, and then you can sack an artifact after paying one to make it so that you can get a creature through by causing it causing another creature not to be able to block this turn. This card seems sweet and limited. This card seems pretty good in a red deck and constructed. Being able to get three to, uh, three power for three mana, and then being able to pump stuff up larger and then push more damage through. So, limited-wise, fantastic card. Mm -hmm. Constructed, I don't know if it's quite good enough to make the cut. Sure. There are a lot of really good three drops, especially in red. You have the garrison from uh, mm -hmm. Eldritch Moon. You have yeah. the the copter from this set. You have the four four haste hellion from this set as well. Mm -hmm. I don't think it makes the cut over any one of those three. That is fair enough. We'll see if that happens. Moving right along, we're about halfway through the box with this pack.
And in the back of this one, we have a Fateful Showdown. This is another one of the storyline cards. Um, Tezzeret and Pianolar are going to have a fight at some point. Um, this card specifically, uh, it deals damage to player equal to the number of cards in your hand, and then you get to basically get a Wheel of Fortune for however many cards are in your hand. So it's a red hand refresh. Seems decent and limited. Doesn't seem like it's making the cut and constructed. Very cool, flavorful storyline moment that we get to see. Yeah, this is a, a very, very cool card. Very, very... It's a newer design for a card. I don't mm -hmm. think we've seen anything like this where we get the deal damage equal to number of cards in hand, and then this card and draw that many. Mm -hmm. It might see some sideboard play in standard. Maybe I think for if there is a really well. good if there is a control deck out there, this card is actually probably very good, mm -hmm. especially as a way to counteract that. Right. Give Red some card draw to catch back up in the later stages. Sure. Well, I'm glad that you heralded the powers of that card, but I hate to ruin what you're doing. We're heading into this pack at a very fast speed. Our rare in this pack is Sahili's Artistry. This is a six mana sorcery where you get to choose one or both. Most of the time, if it's possible, do both. Um, you get to make a token of target artifact or create a token of target creature, except that it's an artifact in addition to its other types. So it's a clone stapled to a copying an artifact. Yeah. So I heard you guys like Gearhawks. How would you like to have a couple more? Yeah, because if your target artifact is also your creature, this spell doesn't care. Just copy target artifact. Yeah, so you can have your opponent play, oh, I, don't, I don't know, Noxious Gearhawk. You just go, oh, that's, that's neat. I'll take two of those, please. This card seems really, really good. Really good card and limited. Mm -hmm. Constructed, too maybe. expensive. Too expensive, maybe one of. Maybe. I can, I can yeah. maybe see it I can, from I, play. I definitely think no matter what, if you're blue, you play that card in limited. Because that, like... It is your clone, finisher in a blue deck. Clone your thing. Yeah. Clone your best things. All right. So here is a dramatic reversal. Let's head to the back of this pack. The rare in this pack is a Mythic. This is Metallurgic Summonings. This is a 5-mana enchantment that gives you an XX colorless construct artifact creature whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell. X ends up equal to the converted mana cost. You can spend 5 and exile this permanent if you have 6 or more artifacts in play, and get back all the instants and sorceries in your hand. I don't know how to evaluate this card, to be honest. Uh, if there's a spell-free deck in standard, oh. sure this card's fine, otherwise I think this is casual fodder. I, I tend to agree, but this could be one that I'm okay being wrong on. Yeah, I, I th this design is sweet. Like, regardless of if this card ends up being highly playable, this design is still very sweet, gives you a lot of value. And I think in the right <coughs> commander deck, in the right casual deck, this could see a lot of... And again, just like every other card in the set, the artwork is fantastic. Yeah, that's one of the things that we commented on during crew release weekend and during uh, Crack and Sort here at the store. The set has colors. We've been in sepia, brown, gray land for so long that it's nice to just see something that's nice, awesome, saturated but still has nice pops of color in the I mean, arts. that's kind of what happens when we've been on Innistrad, and then Zendikar was basically being destroyed. Right. All right, so we do have another storyline character here. This is Ovaya Pashiri, the Sage Lifecrafter. She makes servo tokens and also allows you to create constructs that are equal to the number of creatures you control. She's really sweet and limited. Like, she turns a board stall into a board lockdown, mm -hmm. and then eventually, once the lockdown's established, she just makes big dude, big dude, big dude, big dude win game. Yeah. I, I can see some commander players wanting to play around with this mm -hmm. card. Constructed-wise, I honestly don't know. I don't think she finds a place in Constructed. I think she's too mana-intensive, and this standard format seems to be a little more aggressive mm -hmm. than what it's going to allow her to do. All right. This isn't the ninth pack we've opened, but let's head on through to the rare. That one was good. 
Ignite it. I'm, I'm not needing any of it. This is the key to the city. Uh, you can tap this and discard a card to allow up to one target creature to be unable to be blocked. And then when it untaps, you can pay two to draw a card. Um, if you want to play a cool madness enabling deck, this seems to be the way to go. Most of the madness enabling decks in standard right now um, don't seem to want to use something that's as mana intensive. Not to mention most of the madness decks are tier two. Yeah. Um... I've seen this card actually do a little bit of work in Limited. Mm -hmm. I can definitely see the unblockability being very relevant in Limited, yeah, and I mean, then being able to turn in two random mana for a card seems yeah. very It gives you a way to discard the extra lands that you don't really need, mm -hmm. and something to do. Something to filter through for yes, what you actually want to try to find. Right. Alright, let's dive Come into on, the JP, next just deck. open a Masterpiece already. I'm, I'm trying. I opened Harvard. one yesterday. And it was the good one. Probably the best one I would could have opened. It was a soul ring. It was nice. I nearly died. Alright, here's another gear for Orrery. We've already talked about this card. I do not have any foils to talk about in here. So, I guess we'll, we'll pack up and move on to the we'll next pack. We'll be packing up and moving on to the next pack. As a reminder, we talked about how this definitely has some cool commander implications. But as we see right now in the format, that is about it. Moving right along. It's as though the trade winds carried us straight into this pack. <coughs> Carry us straight into the Aether, you mean? Yes. And our rare in this pack is a Depala Pilot Exemplar. Uh, this is a 3-3 three, three for 3, 1 red and white. Gives other dwarves plus 1 plus 1, so this is a dwarf lord. Uh, vehicles you control get plus one, plus one, as long as they're creatures, so this is also a vehicle lord. And whenever this becomes tapped, you can pay X, and if you do reveal the top... I haven't read this part yet. No, reveal the right. top X cards of your library, put all dwarves and vehicles from among them in your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Okay, that's this cool. This card seems so, really sweet and limited. Seems really sweet and limited, like... Vehicles are a very integral part of Limited. There is a lot of incidental dwarves in a lot of packs, uh, and a lot of picks that you're going to make, especially in red and white. And then being able to filter to more dwarves in vehicles is something you could definitely set up to be a winning strategy in white Absolutely. Red. Even if you don't draw her, white red vehicles is a deck, and it's a deck to worry about. We do have a foil that I'm going That's to cool. land Aww. right in front of you. It is just a foil island, but again... Let's talk about that art. Let's talk about that foil. My favorite art. island art for this set. Yeah. Hands favorite, down. Favorite island art for a while. Like, art, again, we've already talked about how gorgeous the art in this set is. The lands are no exception because they all have that curved, filigreed figure mm -hmm. to all of them, which is sweet. All right. Let's dive on to the rare in this pack. And our rare for this box is the Dynavolt Tower. What does the screen um, do again? <laughs> when you cast an instant or sorcery, you get two energy. You can tap it, pay five energy, and lightning bolt something. And limited, it's limited, cool. limited, it seems fine in the energy decks. Duh, I do not see this being powerful enough and constructed. Yeah, again, no, no. it's... Eh, it could be fine in the instant uh, sorcery spell-based deck as another way to chain out more damage, because if you think about it, three spells, you're dealing three damage. It's kind of the Possibly. same amount as a... Uh, why am I blanking on this card? Thermo Alchemist. But it does cost one more mana, and does take an extended amount of time. You can't just ping, ping, ping. You have to charge up and bolt. So... It probably won't last that long as a constructed card as people inspect it and decide to hijack other cards instead. You reached on that one, buddy. I did. I reached on the last one. The other were fine. This is the Bomat Courier. It is a 1-1 one, one with haste for 1. Seems like a red deck wants to play this card. Uh, when it attacks, you get to exile the top card of your library face down and you don't get to look at it. Then you can pay one, discard your hand, and sack this dude to put all exiled cards with it into their owner's hands. This card is sweet. I'm a red wizard. I want to play this guy a lot and play it often. Yeah, because by the time you want to crack this guy, he's gotten in two or three times. Your hand is basically empty. It's like you're getting a fresh hand. 
pretty much. And basically, even if he gets to a board state where he can't attack himself, he is the perfect creature to use for crewing, say, oh, I don't know, the copter. Oh, yeah, the copter does crew for one. That yeah. seems just fine. All right, let's move on to our next booster pack. We are five away from the end of our box. Let's get to the masterpiece already. I'm trying. Try harder. I'm, I'm working at a camel's speed. How dare you ask me to move more quickly. <sighs> I set myself up for that one, guys. Yeah, I apologize. you did. I took every advantage of it. Our rare in this pack is another one of the fast lands. This is the Red Blue Flasp Land, the Spire Bluff Canal. That's very difficult wow. to say. You struggled I, with that I, I a got little bit. there. Spire Bluff Canal. Spire Bluff Canal. This is the Red Blue. <laughs> this is the Red home. Blue Fast Land. For those of you keeping track at home. Um, again, what we said about the black white one, modern implications, maybe, and like the Jessica kind of Hiri deck that has been out and around could Delver. use it. Delver could. Delver likes this land. Delver, Delver definitely likes this land. The blue red spells deck in standard likes this land because they're losing. Um, they're losing Shivan Reef. Shivan Reef, thank you very much. Yep. Yeah. Yep. This card is just awesome. Lands are always awesome. Lands are amazing. Still no masterpiece yet. I'm very sad. You disappoint me. I've tried. I've tried very hard. I've tried nine times. You reached again. Sorry. The number nine was there. <laughs> I had to say something. All right. So our rare in this pack is another one of the fast lands. This is Blooming Marsh. It is the black green fast land. This is one of the ones I'm excited about. I'm ready to get back to jamming Abzan in uh, modern and this card makes it so much easier to do that. Yeah, uh, I, again, just like the black-white one, I think it's a combination of those two lands in particular for modern abs, and it's, they're going to definitely enjoy having these cards available Amen. to them. All right, three packs left to go. It may persuade me to play abs, oh, and again, never instead, mind. Of, there are six instead of John. To go. Not likely, no, but it might. You cast red spells. This is what you do. You cast All right. Bolts. What's wrong with it? Nothing. Uh, there are six packs left to go. I misread the box. Those of you who are counting at home are probably like, you missed get it. You're right. Uh, this is Syndicate Trafficker. Uh, three one for one. You can pay one second artifact, put a plus one, plus one counter on this guy, and give him indestructible until end of turn. Um, limited. Great. Constructed. Uh, maybe. It, yeah, it's a three one for one. If there's an aggressive black deck that has a bunch of artifacts that it just happens to have lying around, Sure. This guy seems quite good because he becomes a 4-2 to a 5-3. So I hear there's this artifact based deck in modern. Huh. Would that card would that deck be affinity? It would be affinity. I could see this maybe slotting into that. Like it does if, give if him a splashing to push into black for the thought seize inquisition package, sure. This and all you card. affinity players out there, there is a certain card in modern that is not on that ban list that you might want to look at playing at some point because of this guy. I... It's called Disciple of the Vault. We've discussed this in the yeah. shop multiple times. Yeah, the cards... I mean, the lack of artifact lands in Modern makes it difficult for Disciple to be busted as it was during Artifact Winter, but... But it's still very good. It is still very good. It's as though it's failed to live up to its expectations. Uh, sure, sir. That is um, Inspection, not Expectations. Ah, you just keep taking me down a notch every single time. I got you, man. I can't let these puns get out of control. God, terrible. All right, our rare out of this pack is the Aetherflux Reservoir. Um, so I heard you like life gain. I heard you like casting lots of spells to gain lots of life. Also heard Eric likes losing to this card in playtesting. So, guys, <laughs> there is a Cheerios deck in Standard, believe it or not. I For don't know if it has legs. For those of you who are unaware of what Cheerios means, Cheerios is a deck that includes lots of zero-cost artifacts in order to create some sort of storm effect to eventually kill you. This is the kill effect. Play all of your zero-drop artifacts, go up to 50 life, 50-someone. 50 you know what I heard a deck that might actually enjoy this card? It's a deck you're kind of partial to in Modern. Uh, I'm not playing this card in Jeskai Sindensi. It's not strong enough. It, it gains it you a lot of life, it could, but it's... It could be good enough. I I do cast you know, spells. You know, you know what this card allows you to do? Play all your spells and not die to Eidolon of the Great Rebel. Yeah, that's fair. 
And You're taking away. one instead of two. Right. This Again, is fine. This is a cool build around me card is what we're getting at. The question is, is there something that's going to be built around? Is it just tier two or is it tier zero? We'll see. We will find out. Especially with SCG ND happening the, week, right. the day after I, launch. Someone's going to be brave enough to play that deck in that tournament. I'm going to be happy. Not me. I hope that they're on features. I, I, the SCG crew is, about, is really good about getting some cool decks on mm -hmm. camera, especially week one. If somebody's playing this deck, <laughs> It'll yes. be on camera. Nick, Nick will know, and Nick will get it on camera. This is the other card that plays along with Aetherflux Reservoir. Yep. You can play all your zero-drop artifacts and then return them at the end of your opponent's turn, since this is an instant, to draw a bunch of extra cards to draw more of your zero-drop artifacts and then sure. drop them all at the same time. Sure, we do this on our turn. I mean, you can do that on your turn as well. You storm. You, can... you basically storm up enough on your on your own turn to just flat out kill them. Right. This is. This can also be used as a contingency at the end of your opponent's turn in case you have a bunch of your artifacts down already to reset and start the storm again with the Aether Flux Reservoir. Mm -hmm. But again, these two cards are very good friends. There is a deck that puts them together. Is it deep enough to go into <coughs> constructed in standard? Time will only tell. Three packs left to go. Still no inventions, no masterpieces. I swear, one of these times when we open a box for you guys on camera, we will open, open one of the really cool cards. But not today. Oh, uh, maybe. We got three packs. We'll see. I almost want to go dig through and see if one of these. That would be nice. But that's okay. I would probably face some very harsh scrutiny for that. I'll give you that one. Our rare in this pack is Architect of the Untamed. Whenever you have a land enter the battlefield, you get an energy. Basically, this is landfall, get an energy. And then after you have eight energy sorted, of, <coughs> you can turn that eight energy into a 6-6 six, six artifact creature beast token. Um, limited? Limited. This card's sweet. This card's very sweet and limited. Getting up to eight energy and limited is not... I mean, it's difficult, but it's doable in the color combinations we mm -hmm. discussed earlier. Green, blue, red. Um, but giving you this sort of a payoff on a 2-3 body, which is fine at 3, is really, really cool. And also, playing lands, just like Landfall was designed to do, it gives you a <laughs> boost for doing something you want to be doing in and, and last I checked, this ability can be activated at instant speed, so it makes a really great blocker in Limited. Yep, it does. Two packs left to go. Let's see what we get out of this pack guarded by Dylan Bound. We've only opened one plane blocker. There's uh, four points markers right. in this set. Uh, no, we need, yeah, we have only opened the one. In the yeah, path. we need to open another one. Well, we'll see. I mean, we've done pretty good on Netflix so far. Whales. All right, so our rare in this pack is the Cultivator's Caravan. This is a 5-5 five, five, for 3 vehicle with crew 3. So you got to cap 3 power of dudes to activate this guy. But he is a mana rock on a stick. It's a mana rock. It's a mana rock. It'll accelerate you unlimited. It's a... Th Three mana, mm -hmm. get any color that you want. And in limited, a 5-5 five, five later in the game is just Very good. fine as well. So yep. your mana rock can turn into a 5-5 five, five for a turn or so, but mostly it's, it's a, a mana, mana rock. rock. Final booster pack of the box. All right, JP. Let's make it, it a good is, one. It's empty. I'm let's sad. make it a good one. All right. Hopefully that didn't mess with the white balance that much. I thought about that after I did that. <laughs> All right. Oh, Thought to Last was our first card, and it's the last booster pack. It almost seems like it was meant to be. You missed it, sir. Keep going. I did, and I, I saw it after I did it, and I was like, no. Oh, we did get a Mythic. It is a Noxious Gear Hulk. This is a 6 mana 5 4 Menacer that kills a dude on entry and gives you life equal to the destroyed creature's toughness. This card is sweet. This card is I think we can say that about any of the Gear Hulks. The White Gear Hulk basically causes a cataclysm to occur. Conveniently, it's called Cataclysmic Gear Hulk. This guy destroys a creature when it enters the battlefield, so you get removal on a stick. The red one gives you the option of getting cards and playing sort of this Punisher effect. The green one gives you plus one, plus one counters. The blue one buy ba buys back a spell for free. Even if you have no creatures, the green one is just an 8-8 trampler for five mana. That seems I heard that is pretty good. That card is really good. Just in general, the Gear Hulk cycle is super, super flavorful. I'm, as someone who played when the original Titans came out, I never thought I'd say this. I'm glad the Titans are back. Guys, 
Sleeper strategy for standard. I want somebody to work on this and take it to Indy for us. Three, two, one. Soul Soul flare. flare. Please, Soul Flare. Soul we flare. have the ability to do so. Okay. Oh, we do. Somebody have... make it happen, please. Yeah. We do have another card in this pack. Uh, it is a foil rare. This is the legendary creature, Cumball Console of Allocation. Um, whenever an opponent casts a non creature spell, the player loses two life and you gain two life. In a lot of the strategies that are happening right now, being able to drain your opponent for two whenever they cast a non creature spell with the amount of planeswalkers and other instants and sorceries going on, this card seems like a great sideboard addition for a lot of the white black control decks. Absolutely, I agree. It gives a deck like that a chance to stabilize. I mean, see, two, three for two for three mana. Mm -hmm. That is a very good, reasonable rate. And mm -hmm. tack on top of it, then you get to basically drain them for two every time they cast a non creature spell. Not just an instant of sorcery, any non creature spell. Mm -hmm. And this card is really sweet. Of them. I, th I saw it do a little bit of work for people over the weekend mm -hmm. at pre-releases. I think it's going to do a lot of work in standard. However, unfortunately, that is all for our box opening. Thank you so much for watching. Again, just a reminder, Winnebox FNN starts this Friday <coughs> for our standard and draft Friday Night Magics. Comic Town Classic Series Final is coming up on October... Well, the Fall Classic is coming up on October 8th. 2K guaranteed in prizes to the top... 16. If we get 100 or more people, we're giving away $5,000. Please invite your friends. Invite your not-so-good friends. Invite your frenemies. Frenemies are great for taking their money away from it's by not doing well. Also, clearing this out of the way since these booster packs have started accumulating, finals qualifiers are coming to some states near your hometown hobbies in West Virginia. Legendary Games in Kentucky. White Flag Games in Indiana. Check their websites, check their Facebook pages, find out where these finals qualifiers are happening near you. And we're here at Comic Town. My name is JP. I'm Eric. Don't forget, we also have SCG Regionals coming up the weekend after our fall Thank classic. You, I was forgetting something. October 15th is SCG Regionals. That's also down at the Convention Center. Find out more details on our Facebook page, which is Comic Town Gaming Center. Thank you for seeing us broadcast live. This is. This was a fun experience, I like actually. the live format. Can we do this again, Shelby? Can we do this live? You're shrugging. I hope that means yes. <laughs> Next and time we'll have more events, so you guys can plan ahead to watch us do this. Absolutely. We'll definitely be advertising that on our Facebook page and on YouTube as well. Thank you again for tuning in, and we'll see you guys here in the shop. Hopefully see you all for Friday night. <clears throat> I like life so much better. It needs to be conversational. Oh, God, it was so much fun. Are we clear? Okay, so these need inserted at some point. I just take the real that don't and place them out. I am going to go see you.